spacecraft need to have coatings, covers, or tiles that are white, gray, or black to control the heating issues in space. Even spy satellites or spy spacecraft require these colors, which makes it easy to see them from the ground and know when they're watching, until our quantum stealth light bending material came along. What do solar panels, spacecraft, and quantum stealth have to do with each other? Heat and light. The more light provided, the more heat produced. Mirrors are used in solar thermal energy systems to reflect sunlight onto a central tower to produce steam to generate power from steam turbines. The mirrors are placed in very specific configurations to avoid shadows from surrounding mirrors. The world's largest solar thermal farm, just completed a few years ago in the Mojave Desert, Ivanpah Solar Electric Generating System, has 1,700 mirrors, each measuring 70 square feet, placed across 3,500 acres to power 140,000 California homes. The three towers are filled with water and the mirrors reflect sunlight onto the towers, raising the temperature to more than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, turning the water into steam that spins the turbines. Cost to construct the system was $2.2 billion, but using sunlight instead of fossil fuels will reduce carbon emissions by more than 400,000 tons annually. In our last video, I showed how our material could not only reduce shadows, but completely remove them. And these acres of mirrors are not fully utilizing all the space due to the shadows that they cast. The simple addition of three lenticular lens sheets placed over mirrors was conducted on November 2nd, 2018 at 1040 in the morning. The amplified panel produced 86 and a half watts, whereas the control panel only produced 58 and a quarter watts, which is 28 and a quarter watts greater output, or 48% more power. Solar panel manufacturers determine the maximum output by simulating the sun at noon at the equator on a clear day. The solar radiation available in this scenario is 1000 watts per meter squared. When I tested these panels in Maple Ridge, the sun was only at an altitude of 19 degrees high and the solar radiation readings from the University of British Columbia indicate it was only 250 to 300 watts per meter squared. Our amplified panel produced 23.71% more power than the maximum achievable at the equator on a clear day at noon, yet we had less than one third of the solar radiation to work with. In the next example, I added the side lenses and mirrors and achieved 49.59 watts greater than the control panel. When compared to the manufacturer's stated maximum, I was able to provide 38.5 watts more than maximum, which is 52% more power than you can get under perfect conditions. Domestic water heating is estimated to be the second largest energy end use for Canadian households, accounting for approximately 22% of the total household energy consumption. The most efficient water heater temperature is typically around 145 degrees Fahrenheit. While the non-amplified panels don't reach this temperature, our amplified panels do, and then some. In some lesser quality solar panels, this heat can cause permanent damage. We can utilize the heat for thermal water applications, or we can try to reduce it. So I created a lenticular lens heat shield, and while it did cause a reduction in amplified output, it also reduced the heat by 30 degrees Fahrenheit when compared to the same amplified panel without the heat shield tested a few minutes later. Now we can compare the full effect of the heat shield and we see that it caused a loss of about 18% power over the non-heat shield amplified panel but still retain 63% more power than the control panel. The two limiting factors for mirror boosters alone are hot spots and temperatures that can get too high. Could I limit the heat and spread the light across the panels with a lenticular lens heat shield? It accomplished both. The reduction in power was only 11%, but the reduction of heat was over 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So what works better, mirror boosters or lenticular lenses over mirrors? The best I could achieve with the mirror boosters was a doubling of the power. The best I could achieve in a similar configuration using lenticular lenses over the mirrors was nearly triple the output over the control panel. This means that the lenticular lenses over the mirrors provided 22 extra watts, which is 51% more power over the mirror boosters alone. Most of these examples are not practical for pre-existing solar panels that are connected together on a roof. 
There is a boundary around most panels in which we can place slat boosters. These are just small versions of the lenticular lens over the mirror. When I tested with them and without them, I was able to conclude that just the three slat boosters accounted for 16% more power, which is an extra 12.84 watts over the amplified panel with no slats. The boost from just these three slats allowed the panel to equal the maximum output under perfect conditions. In a place like Vancouver, where the solar radiation is half or less than half of the maximum most of the year, this could change everything for the solar industry.